to introduce uh, Gabriele Giovanni. And, and uh, uh, so Gabriel Giovanni is the head of one department, uh, Enterprise Application Presso. He's going to explain exactly what this department is doing. And just before Gabriele starts, let uh, me hand over to Eric Candela, who is the Global Account Manager G from AWS. Merci beaucoup Philippe et d'abord merci beaucoup Gabriele et Yann William pour votre support pour présenter en fait ce qu'on fait ensemble sur la, la simulation plus exactement. Peut-être avant de rentrer dans, ce, dans cette technologie, ce qui est intéressant de voir aussi, c'est pour faire le lien entre ce qui a été dit entre Kevin et, et Juliette juste avant, c'est effectivement on travaille au niveau technologique et Gabriele sera beaucoup mieux placé que moi pour vous parler de ce, ce qu'on fait ensemble. Mais ce qui est intéressant aussi de voir, c'est en fait derrière une relation client entre un Jerry Vernova et un AWS, c'est pas uniquement en fait de vendre de l'infrastructure, vendre du compute ou vendre du stockage, mais en fait on a travaillé ensemble sur différents axes. Donc comment finalement Jerry Vernova peut créer de la valeur pour Amazon, notamment en nous aidant à fournir de l'énergie et aussi finalement à moderniser en fait tout l'aspect grid pour nos data centers. On essaie aussi de les aider sur tous les aspects go to market. Comment on peut les aider finalement pour vendre leurs logiciels plus facilement dans l'écosystème de l'énergie ça, re, ça rejoint un petit peu ce que disait Juliette tout à l'heure, d'où l'intérêt finalement d'avoir une approche finalement verticale pour hein, créer cette synergie au sein des différents clients et au sein de la value chain, ce qui permet en fait de créer des bénéfices mutuels entre vous. Euh, voilà. Et évidemment, la troisième partie, c'est cet accord cloud qu'on a signé en, en juin, donc qui est un accord global. Et, euh, et donc là, on va se focaliser sur la partie HPC, donc euh, sur la partie Wind Turbines. Et, euh, et après, on verra sans doute par la suite, sans dévoiler les, les questions-réponses, comment, euh, comment cette, euh, je dirais, cette approche peut être aussi généralisée sur différents autres sujets. So, Gabriele, thank you very much. Grazie mille per tutti. Up to you. Bonjour à tout le monde. Euh, désolé, mais euh, mon vocabulaire en français il est limité. Uh, I need to switch in English. Uh, so I'm here on behalf of uh, uh, Givernova and in particular high performance computing team. Um, and uh, I'd like to talk today about the, uh, our journey and our transition for this uh, particular technology infrastructure uh, of high performance computing from on-prem in the cloud. Uh, before entering in this uh, topic, let me just uh, spend a couple of minutes about uh, Vernova, because maybe you are familiar with the General Electric uh, and uh, all the products uh, developed, designed and developed by G. By G. G Vernova basically is a, separa is a consequence of the separation of General Electric in three assets, aerospace, healthcare, and uh, Vernova. And Ver the mission of Vernova is uh, the production of um, Uh, machines that produce energy, optimization of the distributed the, the power, uh, uh, the, so the grid uh, solution, um, hybrid solution. Uh, we have a, a big and enormous portfolio. Uh, so our mission is to decarbonize the world through our, throughout our portfolio of machines. Our machines are complex. Uh, complex, you know, when we talk about uh, gas turbines, steam turbine, hydraulic wind, uh, you can imagine these are uh, complex components, complex system that requires a lot of simulation. Uh, simulation uh, for fluid dynamic analysis, mechanical analysis, structural analysis, and uh, all engineering disciplines in order to optimize the product. So high performance computing is not uh, uh, something new, but uh, it's uh, something that we have uh, since decades, let me say, since uh, uh, 1990 or similar. And uh, uh, this step of moving into the cloud is uh, a, an evolution an evolution, thanks also to the separation. Um, uh, today, I would like to uh, tell you a couple of uh, uh, use cases about wind turbine, just to give an idea uh, how high performance computing is used inside, uh, um, in, in this context, and uh, also to tell you the story about the, and the challenge that we have been uh, 
experiencing in uh, uh, building uh, this uh, infrastructure in the cloud, it's, a, it's even a cultural uh, change for uh, uh, this transition, moving from uh, a certain infrastructure, a certain uh, approach, uh, moving in the cloud, uh, of course, uh, contains uh, some challenges, difficulties, but many opportunities. So, first of all, why high-performance computing uh, is necessary in the wind turbine design? Um, I, will tell, I will talk about a couple of use cases. Uh, one is named load analysis, and the other is named uh, FEA, but it's the structural analysis. So, the scope of load analysis is basically to uh, mm, perform an assessment of uh, the, the loads, the force, momentum that uh, are generated by the wind on the wind turbine structure. You can imagine this is uh, really a critical phase, a critical part of the entire design because uh, we have our model, we have our product, but uh, when we need to simulate the behavior of uh, a wind turbine in a wind farm, we need to evaluate the, uh, the, 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 the loads generated on the structure by the wind distribution. The other is, uh, let me say, uh, a consequence after the load analysis, basically we need to perform the structural analysis. And structural analysis uh, in this kind of machine represent uh, some uh, challenges because, uh, um, I mean, we'll see, we'll see better later. Um, uh, I don't want to bore you with uh, uh, details about the engineering process. The goal of this uh, speech is to tell you the story, uh, wh what we have been doing uh, 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 how we have implemented an high performance computing platform in the cloud able to perform this kind of analysis. I prefer to start from the structural analysis, the second use case that I mentioned, because it's uh, uh, more common in the engineering uh, process. Everybody, every company uh, like us, uh, but in many, many other uh, contexts in engineering design, perform structural analysis as, as part of the standard design process. Um, and what is the reason why we decide to move in the cloud? What, what is the, the novelty of this uh, choice? Well, uh, we should uh, do a step back to 2021, when uh, we had a big on-prem uh, on infrastructure, HPC infrastructure, but uh, there were, um, it was not designed and tailored for this specific use case. Um, there was a lack of uh, 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 fitting of the resource type. It was mainly designed for fluid dynamic analysis, maybe for combustion analysis, but not uh, specifically for the, uh, th this kind of use case. We had certain type of compute node dedicated for this analysis, but limited. And actually the third critical point was the workload management, because uh, the workload management actually in uh, a classical uh, research and development phase, uh, it's, uh, let me say, more predictable and relatively constant, at least in a pretty long period. But if on the contrary you need to perform uh, a wind farm uh, design, and you need to evaluate in a uh, few months uh, the load analysis or the structural analysis, like in this case, uh, of course you have an enormous amount of analysis to be performed in a very short time, followed maybe a period where you don't use HPC at all. So the demanding of the, the resource, the computational resource, is extremely variable in this context. This was the main reason why we decided that, uh, in 2021 to start a new journey and build a new HPC infrastructure in AWS. Um, and of course, uh, uh, it's uh, something uh, you can imagine. Uh, the, the main benefits are the scalability and flexibility, 
uh, according to the workload trend. We decide to use uh, an on-demand model uh, at the beginning. Uh, the capability to find the best type of uh, uh, compute resource in, the, uh, in this uh, context. Um, uh, it's interesting also to mention that, uh, for example, we provided a long list to en our engineering team of possible different type of compute node, and then they started to converge naturally to the two or three most important and most efficient. Uh, so without uh, defining uh, upfront uh, uh, barriers or uh, criteria that uh, we didn't know, uh, it was a natural selection. Uh, and uh, additionally, last important point has been the increment of uh, productivity because uh, previously with on-prem, there was a long pending time to to, to, uh, for the job that couldn't start, there was not enough capacity. And now, on the contrary, there is just uh, the minimum pending time, five, eight minutes, to allocate the resource and, and the job starts immediately. Um, there are also ch some challenges. Uh, we have found some challenges and difficulties in, this, uh, uh, in implementing this activity. Some of them are still there, to be honest. For example, uh, the uh, pa part of the design process is uh, still based on the classical on-prem tools, I mean, uh, that run on local workstation, maybe on other systems. So the time that we spend, that our engineering team spends to download or upload, to transfer the file, it's a waste. Okay, so this is for sure one of the uh, activity, the, the uh, elements we need to continue to work. And the second that I like to mention is the uh, latency, the latency problem for the interactive session. We have a visualization node to, uh, in, to have an interactive session to prepare the model or to, uh, to, to see the results, to analyze the results. Of course, uh, we created this uh, HPC in the cloud in uh, a region that is uh, uh, where 90% of the people, it, it's close to 90% of the people, more or less. But uh, there are other people, for example, in other, in United States or maybe in India, uh, that need to interact to the same resource. And of course, uh, the problem of latency is, uh, makes the life more difficult. So this is something to consider when we built uh, an HPC in the cloud. The second use case uh, that I would like uh, to mention uh, is uh, the load analysis. And uh, I think this is something uh, uh, particular for this case. Uh, and I'd like to mention a couple of uh, in things in particular. Um, first of all, uh, the volume. Uh, the volume, I mean, you, you understand that, that uh, if we need to explore the spectrum of the wind distribution along the day, the week, uh, the year, uh, uh, it's, uh, th there are millions of uh, analyses to be performed. And uh, the second is that uh, even if uh, the tool that we use for our analysis is uh, relatively simple, uh, it requires just one core. It can run even on this laptop in uh, 20, 30 minutes, less than one hour, let me say. But uh, uh, if you want to explore millions of analyses in a decent time, of course, you need to parallelize. This is the classical case of embarrassing parallelism, where each solution is independent from the other, but we need to explore a big spectrum, the whole system. And what is the, uh, so which are the main challenges that we can see for this kind of uh, system? Uh, so first of all, uh, it's a Windows-based tool. So uh, it's a pretty, uh, an alien, let me say. Uh, generally speaking, in HPC context, we always have uh, Linux-based application except for the visualization. But this is, on the contrary, the solver is a pure Windows-based. So this, of course, represented a, a challenge because the environment we had set up was completely tailored. 
And the second uh, is uh, the management of the data, because you, uh, even if the results of each analysis is, uh, let me say, few megabytes, uh, but of course you have millions of files to be managed. To be managed. So these are the uh, challenges that we uh, found in this particular use case. For building this infrastructure, uh, we had not only the problem of um, changing the mindset and uh, uh, support user in this transition, but we also had a problem from uh, uh, the classical technical aspect. Um, one topic I'd like uh, to mention is about uh, cybersecurity, and not because cybersecurity is uh, uh, it's a barrier or, or, or a problem, but uh, you can imagine, I mean, think about the two extreme. A startup that has nothing, and uh, so they look at the cloud with a certain op optimism, uh, and uh, let's say, I can find here the solution that I need, and uh, I rely on the service provided by the, 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 the cloud provider. And another big company like G. Vernova, where on the contrary, there is a big structure, a, big pay, a lot of attention about the cybersecurity aspect, the protection of intellectual property, and many other things uh, related. So uh, what uh, we noted uh, in this journey uh, was, of course, uh, the lack of, uh, mm, how can I say, standard plugin. I added this. Uh, it came to my mind the example of the power charger uh, uh, adapter, because uh, when I go, let me say, from, it, from Europe to United States or wherever I go in, in the world, I don't care if my power charger, the frequency of my power charger is correct, is the same, uh, is valid for my device, uh, or if my pin are, can be plugged in the uh, in, in, the, in, in, in that country. I have an adapter that allows me to travel uh, safely without any concern. What we should probably continue to invest and to work all together as community is the capability to create a new um, standard layer that make the life easier for uh, an application owner. I want to take care about the simulation tools and the HPC infrastructure, and not on the um, other aspect that, of course, slow down the implementation. Um, the other important thing is the cost optimization. And, and this is, of course, uh, sometimes I use uh, a, an analogy like if you give uh, a funny toy to your kids, uh, of course, they start playing uh, and they never stop. And uh, uh, the solution that we have provided, uh, for some reason, recalled me this, uh, uh, this, uh, concept, this idea, because uh, at the end, uh, we came from, a, as I said at the beginning, there was a uh, a lack of a certain type of resource, of HPC resource, and when we provided, of course, there was a kind of uh, effect, uh, pooling effect, and uh, many people started to use uh, uh, significantly. And especially with an on-demand model, a pure on-demand model, at the end of the month, of course, uh, you might have surprise. So it's important, since the beginning, to analyze and put in place uh, the proper control, the proper mechanism that can uh, control, I want to say reduce, uh, I mean, this is a business uh, decision uh, and uh, it, it's an opportunity, but of course, uh, we must have all control mechanisms that allow us uh, to keep the cost under control. And there are many uh, possibilities and many degree of freedom where we can play. For example, the optimization of uh, the resource type, uh, put some caps, uh, use job scheduler to put some caps or some other mechanism to uh, prioritize a certain type of analysis versus other. Um, maybe 
uh, adopt some commercial saving plan. For example, there is a saving plan uh, uh, available. Uh, this is a pure commercial discussion, a pure commercial model that, of course, can uh, help uh, in uh, reducing the cost. Bottom line, if I look at the three years ago, four years ago, and I say, what is uh, the uh, benefit that we can see, and even the uh, thoughts uh, that are still open. Um, well, for sure, number one, no infrastructure management. No infrastructure management at all. This is no more a business problem. We can focus on what really matters for our business. Um, accessibility to latest technology. This is a second uh, very important. Previously, it, is been, it has been mentioned uh, the new CPU type uh, or the, um, uh, let's say, artificial intelligence uh, uh, solution that can help uh, in um, uh, optimizing our system. Um, third is the flexibility. Uh, uh, this increase a lot the productivity of engineering teams, so it's an important value for the, uh, the, the company. Some cons or some points to reflect more than cons. Uh, um, we should continue to work on the full integration. We need to provide the full ecosystem to design engineer, otherwise uh, uh, there is, uh, I mean, any data transfer, it's a waste and it's, it makes less efficient the, uh, the, the, the design. Um, and also, as I said a few minutes ago, the cost control, it's something extremely important uh, to avoid surprise. Um, that's it. So this is, uh, I hope, uh, to have given an idea of our journey in the cloud uh, transition. Any question? Ah, thank you. Thank you.